these scattered parts circuit board represent the contents of this kit uh, I opened it recently on a mail video it's a five dollar kit actually uh, if you order one you pay 90, 90 cents shipping I think I ordered three I'm tired of building a kitten and finding that something is amiss and I have to then reorder it and build a second one. The specs, you know, there was a schematic given. As I do now, as you kind of have it, I've drawn a, a to scale board layout, made sure every component had a part number and designation then formed a bill of materials and drew a schematic and of course I, I think I hope the designation for the parts and the value of the parts match here here and here this is as received in the bag okay so we have a single input AC I would imagine it should not exceed 24 volts AC and a bridge rectifier uh, a fair sized electrolytic but only rated 35 volts DC uh, a small noise filter a three terminal regulator now this LT uh, 1083 is like a 371 on steroids. Uh, I think Texas Instrument came out with this chip some years ago and was capable of making s enduring 7.5 amps and I believe 30 volts DC. Now that assumes a proper heat sink. A voltage divider here and here this leg of the voltage divider is adjustable that controls the difference between input and output actually it actually controls the output uh, the ratio of these two resistors uh, these are reverse voltage diodes in case output filtering the same way now look at this capacitor 35 volts no 25 volts a 7 amp self resetting fuse and an LED and current limiting light lamp this is a, just to indicate output voltage is present I'm going to look around and see if I can find a filter capacitor with a 35 or 50 volt rating this is 50 volts it'll never see 50 volts uh, I'd feel comfortable if this was 50 volts so when you see the values in here they are as received and I although I have no self resetting fuses except for the one that came in the kit I did order uh, some 3 amp and 5 amp units I hate to buy them one at a time there. A buck and a half plus shipping from Mauser. I think uh, I can buy, I did buy from China, you know, like 10 for four dollars or something. Not that I want to protect the output, but I may only use a 5 amp transformer. So let's put it together after I see if I have any 50 volt units. I've installed everything on this little circuit board except for the three terminal regulator and uh, the heat sink. Now the heat sink it's extruded to produce a continuous pair of holes here the whole way through. This side is tapped in order to accept an M3 
uh, screw. And two are provided with the kit. The three terminal device, and this is a little bit off center of the hole, mounts here. And the only other screw in the kit is this monstrosity, which is obviously not. I don't know why. I've seen this before. In fact, here's one from a previous kit that was a ridiculous length. I don't have to. Uh, here's one. There's one that's been laying around the desk for a while. So the heat sink mounts here. in this pair of holes. Now that means if you're going to mount this in a piece of equipment or a chassis, or even put rubber feet so you can slide it around. These are the only available holes. Now these holes, all six of them are floating, they're not connected to the board in any way. And why have the board like this? I use this Heiko, I think it's a 95 watt handpiece. It's set for 750 degrees Fahrenheit. It took a long time to heat some of these joints up. This trace is, is very thick. It acts as a heat sink. And then of course we have these leads, which just soak up heat. So getting them up at soldering temperatures was a bit of an effort. So I'll fasten this board down. The designer of the board did a good job when he cut this notch in here to allow gravity flow upward over the fins. See, this obscures uh, these two openings here that cut out goes clear back. Now that I've said something nice about the board designer, these holes don't line up with the tapped holes in this heat sink. It makes it so hard to get the screw in without cross threading it. And I'm sure that this extrusion is a standard. So the dimension the spacing of the holes should be a standard. I'm actually cross-threading that. I'm going to take it to a drill press and enlarge these holes a little bit. I enlarge these holes a little bit hoping to better make connection with the tapped holes in the uh, heat sink. And while I was there, I drilled and tapped four M3 holes. I went through my selection of fans. And if you look at how the holes in this fan, which are here and here, they fit pretty well in between these fins. Now this is a 50 millimeter fan. I tried it a 40 and I believe it's 30 millimeter fan. And I couldn't get the holes, the fins in one position or another, or even if the fan was left center. I always had a fin in the way. So, it's the American way. Bigger is better. I could have gone with a thicker fan, and I may resort to that. Now, when I drill these holes this close to the edge, now I had to use shorter uh, screws to hold the circuit board in place. 
and I came up with these. And then I came up with a screw to hold the three terminal device. Well, look at that. I was going to say I'm, I'm going to put this three terminal device in. So I have to slightly take one of these screws out. But at this point, I might as well just go ahead and put the heat sink compound on. Even though I'm not going to use an insulating washer pad, sill pad, I want to uh, put some thermal grease uh, on before I finally secure it. Well, mounting the fan took more time than building the whole board. Well, here's the finished board. Not a lot of clearance between things here. Now, I don't know if this thing is thermally limiting. I'm going to have to read the Texas documents and see whether it shuts down on over temperature. Tomorrow, I'll power it up and we'll see how it works.